to the channel. Hope you guys are doing great. My name is Stephanie, if you guys are new here, and I'm, I swear, every time I get the camera out. Sir, Poey, I don't need you to do it right now. Come here. If you're new here, I'm a UX designer. I'm a new UX designer. So I'm just here to provide you guys a look into what it's actually like, give you some tips and tricks, as well as some lifestyle, day in the lifestyle content. So welcome if you're new. So today's video is going to be your guys' favorite, a day in the life. Um, I have a lot of meetings today. Nobody's surprised that I have lots of meetings today. I think I have. Let's see. Five. I have five meetings. I already did one of them. The rest are stand up, work session. So nothing like more like check in. So nothing super intensive, which is great, which gives me time to focus and, you know, do my designs. I've got a deadline coming up next week, um, a deadline that I set myself just because i'm so used to working under from interior design i'm so used to working under like tight deadlines of like you gotta turn this around in two days nothing less you know crazy so it's sometimes hard when i'm like i don't necessarily have that and i have to set my own so i like working toward the deadline because i know like this is how much i have to accomplish today in order to get to that successful deadline so yeah i'll take you guys through what i can um something i just want to comment about i feel like and I hope like I do a good job of showing you guys what I actually work on without showing too much because obviously there is you know contracts that you sign I don't want to be in breach of any contract I don't want anybody coming for me so I can't show you guys too much and say too much because we're working on things that are not even developed yet so I try my best I don't like to be vague but if I'm being vague that's why so I hope you guys understand that I feel like if you guys are here you see my other videos you probably do so just wanted to put it out there for the newbies let's get this day going let's get these meetings happening um and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit yeah no I'm good yeah no I took yesterday off you know when you have unlimited PTO, it's like, I gotta use it. I gotta use it. Does anybody else take two hours to drink their first cup of coffee in the morning? I always have to reheat it after like, I don't know, 30 minutes sitting there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna drink it. Here we are. Anywho, three more meetings left. Um, this one is like a check-in. Another one is that we had somebody new to the... Not, not the design team, but the product and design team. He's on product ops, I believe. So me and my team just have like an intro call with him to see how he's gonna help our pod going forward. And then, and yeah, and then just a discovery check-in with another team. So yeah, pretty low effort meetings, but kind of itching to do some design work. So hopefully I can bust through these meetings and then get to the actual design, so. I'll take bouncing around. Okay, so one of the things I'm working on today is a user flow. A user flow is pretty much a map that the user is going to take from first entry into whatever product it is to final step. And we call it the happy path. So it's the path that we ideally want the user to take. So without any thing going wrong without any weird edge cases. This is ideally the path we want them to take. We want them to go from A to B, B to C, and just document that flow. So that is what I'm creating now. I can't show you guys exactly what I'm doing, but I do want to show you how I even just get started because I know sometimes the hard part is figuring out what map do I need? What am I going to do? How does this look? So I'm going to show you how I pull some inspiration off Fig Jam and get my user flow started. Okay, so I'm here in Fig Jam. And when you first open Fig Jam, this is like the blank, blankish template that you're going to get. So I'm going to go up here under templates and then just type in user flow. So you're going to get different a few different things, and this is really depending on what you're needing it for. Let's do this one. I think this one could work. So we're gonna add template. And this is exactly how it comes in. And here, it, this one is more, this one is a flow chart. So a lot of these UX terms can kind of ebb and flow. So don't take it like as gospel, what something is called. Like there's lots of ways to do a flow chart. There's lots of ways to do a user flow, but 
just to kind of give you an overview here, how to use the template, and then some other recommendations. And then here, this is nice to give you an example user story here. And this is a good example of if I was this user, these are the steps that I would take. And this one is nice too, because it has like a little legend. And if you're going through your school, your schooling, your boot camp, your studies, I'm sure you're gonna learn about the different shapes and what they mean. And this is great that this is like in Figma. And so you've got your connectors. And so this would be a great template actually for first time creators of flowcharts and things like that because it really has it broken down for you. So like in this case, the user would open the app. Are they logged in? That's a decision that they have to make. If yes, they go down this path. If no, they go down this path and then so-and-so continues. And so I'm guessing this is something similar to like an Instagram because I see media feed and media feed is a process. So then they make another decision. Are you gonna post something, yes or no? And then you kind of go on. So I'm gonna do something different than this, but I did wanna show you guys, this is a great option out there. Yeah, nice to meet you. My name is Stephanie. I'm one of the newer designers on the team. I started back in July, so six, seven months-ish. I used to be a interior designer for seven to eight years. So this is my first UX job, first time in tech. So yeah, happy to be a part of the team and welcome to the team. Since he gave a fun fact, I feel like I need to give a fun fact. So I love reality TV. So if it's a trashy, trashy TV show, I'm most definitely watching it. So if that's your thing, let me know. We can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, welcome. I did want to chat with you guys about layoffs because that is the hot topic. If you are working in tech or you want to be in tech, that is what's happening right now. So quite a few articles. So if I'm glancing down, that's what I'm referencing. Just because I want to get my facts right. Almost 100,000 people lost their tech job last year in 2022. And as we already seen, carrying into 2023, layoffs are still the trend. The question a lot of people find themselves asking is like, why? What the hell is going on? You know? The answer to that, at least the too long didn't read answer to that, is that they overhired during the pandemic years and now we're in an economic downturn and here we are. What I mean by that, 2020 COVID pandemic, everything that we did in person got moved to online. So, so many of these tech companies and these SaaS companies and software blew up. Their usage blew up. They grew immensely. And because of that, they hired for that pandemic growth. They hired for an economy that we currently do not have and because of that they are shedding jobs left and right and the idea is like yes even though they do have to pay out severance packages and it seems like millions if not billions out the door by laying people off they think that by doing these layoffs they're cutting the company's costs overall so it's like just a way to cut costs but none of these companies are hurting for money amazon apple Microsoft, Google, they are in no fear of going out of business. They're not going bankrupt anytime soon. And so that just really puts it into perspective of what these companies are gonna save themselves before they ever save you. And this is coming from somebody who, hey, loves their job. I love my job. My job has been safe. My company has done no layoffs at all. And the industry that I work for, it doesn't grow like at a rapid pace. It grows pretty slowly year over year, so there is growth. And so the past couple of years, this company has hired according to that kind of steady growth. At least that's what I think, and that's what me and my coworkers have talked about, but you never know. You know, this teaches you, and it should teach anybody in any industry that like no job is safe, no place is 100% job secure. So because of that, you have to really kind of back yourself and make sure that you're doing whatever you need to still be on top of things. And by that, I mean, 
keeping your resume current, making sure your portfolio projects are up to date, you know, making sure you're still networking and you never know, you know, and I, knock on wood, everything is good with me. <laughs> and I'm hoping that it's gonna stay that way, but I, you know, can't predict the future. In that case, that's when you really have to rely on savings. That's something that I'm still building, is like building that six month emergency fund of expenses, just in case like, you know, shit hits the fan, you know? You just never wanna be <sighs> totally caught off guard. You're like Beyonce has taught us, okay? Stay ready so you don't have to get ready when shit really hits the fan. So where do we go from here? It's not going to last forever. Like all things in economics, this is cyclical. So things go up and they come back down. We are in the down and it's shitty and it's scary because I don't think there's been tech layoffs like this since the dot-com boom, maybe. Don't quote me on that, but that's why it feels really scary because a lot of us that are, you know, this age have never experienced anything like this, but it's not gonna last forever. Basic economics sells us things go up and they must come down. There is a great CNBC article. I love CNBC guys. <laughs> so random and weird but i love cnbc and i'll link the article and i'm just reading it off here but there's obviously a correlation between the fed raising interest rates and these tech companies doing layoffs this author writes as of now the fed is projected to slow down its pace of rate increases and many believe that by the end of this year they'll pause the rate hikes and maybe even start bringing them down and so when that does happen potentially by the second half of like 2023 I expect the tech company layoff swell will finally subside. So that's like a big if, but it's just something to kind of hold on to. But even though you're seeing these headlines and all these, all these companies laying off, the job market is still pretty strong. I'm seeing that even though people are getting laid off, they're able to find a new job rather quickly. So if this is the industry that you want to work in, if this is the job that you want to work in, now is a great time because you get to come in eyes wide open. We're really getting it to see it at its worst and at its best. So yeah, hopefully this kind of gives you some clarity. At the end of the day, you got to back yourself and make sure that you yourself are good because you're at the mercy of these companies. So you want to get as secure as you can with whatever you got going on now. And we just all kind of hope for the best and just ride this out till it's over because eventually it will be. Okay guys, I'm just about to wrap up my day here, but wanted to close out the video. Thank you guys for watching and coming along with me on my day today. I really hope this kind of content is useful. This is the kind of stuff that I was really looking for when I was looking into UX, was going through my bootcamp, I was looking for jobs. I just really wanted to know what it's actually like. And as you guys have now learned, it's not super glamorous, especially because I don't work, I work from home. I don't work for a really big company. I don't have like, my office is pretty nice, but I don't have like a breakfast catering or anything that's super flashy. It's very much like this is my day to day, but I love my job. I love the work that I do. Um, yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful. Everything we talked about in terms of layoffs and just tech in general, keep everything that we talked about in mind. And yeah, with that guys, I will see you in the next one.